Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today on this two-part webinar series. Uh, we are having two webinars today. The first one being for AutoBuild, a new new feature in ETAP 14. And the second one would be on the Short Circuit Analyzer, which is also a new feature in ETAP 14. And again, we, we thank everyone for joining us here today. We're going to get started on the AutoBuild presentation so we can show you the new way of building a one-line diagram in ETAP 14. We're going to talk about the AutoBuild toolbar, which is composed of multiple sections, being the rule book, the templates, alignment tools, and the voltage propagation. So with that being said, we're going to bring up ETAP so we can show you the way you build a one-line diagram. Now, let's start with what we used to do on a one-line diagram in previous versions of ETAP. Like many CAD programs, you select a component, you drag it to the, to the presentation area, and you pull the components and connect them together. So it's as simple as easy, click, drop, and connect. So in this case, I can take multiple elements, I pull them to the one line, I connect, which many people probably are familiar with in this case already. And then we took it to another level where we added a feature called Auto Connect that removes the need to connect the primary and secondary side of these components separately. So it saves us a couple clicks when you're dragging components. If I multi-select a bus and bring a transformer, You'll notice with Auto Connect, I'm automatically picking up the primary side of the transformer, and once that's connected, I'm then selecting the secondary side. So this feature allows an easy way to collect multiple components without having to grab the connecting icon and manually connect the system ourselves. So in this case, I'm quickly building a motor control center here, and I automatically have the motor terminals to connect to the bus. Now, we've taken this one step further. I'm going to delete these systems that I've currently constructed. Remember to use your keyboard shortcuts here. And we're going to turn on AutoBuild, the new feature of ETAP 14. So with this, you'll notice that the first thing I do is select my source and bring it on the one line diagram. Now after the source is selected, what you'll see is that now I've just clicked a bus and it's automatically connected to the utility. I did not have to drag and drop. After I selected the bus, I add a high voltage circuit breaker. Then I go to a transformer, then select my cable, and another bus. Now that was in matter of seconds, depending on the speed of which you can click on the ace, on the element toolbar. So in this case, with Auto Build, I can just select the, the components in the order I want to connect them, and they're automatically connected in line on the one line diagram. The speed in which you build a one line diagram just got drastically faster. And I continue to do so with protective devices as well. So I select current transformer, relay, breaker, and you see that we're automatically continuing this build in a matter of milliseconds. I connect the bus here. And at any point, I can use any of ETAP's current tools, such as composite networks, composite motors, any of our connection elements, switches, they're all accessible through the auto build feature. And if I drag an element, let's say I select a cable here, we can auto insert. Now historically in ETAP, we've always been able to auto insert protective devices. So in this case, I come in here with my protective device, I put in the fuse and it automatically connects in line with the, with the one line diagram. With ETAP 14, we've taken this to another level. For example, if I go from the fuse 
to a load and I've forgotten my cable, now I can easily auto insert a cable as well. So in this case, I connect, I clicked on the connection line, I clicked the cable, and it was brought in right in line with that load. I didn't have to hit delete, I didn't have to disconnect, I didn't even have to drag the cable. I just clicked the connection line and clicked the cable, and it got brought in automatically. Let's remove this cable and use some of ETAP's other tools, such as the composite network. You can still use previous ways for connections. So if I connect to this bus here, and now we have a new way to select symbols. So in the right click menu, I have a bus node option where I can change the node from a bus to a node and incorporate different sizes as well. So in this new way of selecting symbols, instead of just a node and a bus, we have different sizes for these and you can switch between them very easily. Once I have the composite network in, I can open the composite network and start my connections from this point on again. And again, once we have this selected, I have the bus clicked so I can continue to build on from this point. You have to have the, the component from which you want to continue highlighted. So once I select the bus, what you'll notice is the editor has elements active or deactive based on the ones that you can that you can continue to build upon. So if there's elements that don't make electrical sense on the connections, they will be grayed out in the toolbar. So we only provide you with the options that make electrical sense. Another way auto build helps is if I build this motor network here. and I want to center a line, I select the breaker here and click this alignment tool, which automatically aligns the motor symmetrically against the breaker that's been selected. So we shifted them. Essentially, it was built to the right by default. I click one button as downstream alignment and we symmet symmetrically adjust all the loads accordingly. And now I know that I need to add some protection and some cables in this network as well. So here I highlight the motors and you see that I have some options for what I can insert above these motors. I can insert a, I can insert a protective device as well as a cable. Now, Instead of going one by one, which we previously had to do, in previous versions and many other programs, you have to add a breaker, add a cable, add a load. Add a breaker, add a cable, add a load. In this case, I was able to quickly build all of the loads by just clicking them multiple times on the element, highlighting the loads, and auto-inserting the cables and the breakers for all the motors automatically. This has drastically saved in, in terms of effort and time for the most tedious parts of building a one-line diagram. Other options that we have is if you have to do one more, you can highlight the selected branch 
use keyboard shortcuts to make replications of this as well. So you can very easily rec replicate this whole branch with, with your, your keyboard shortcuts. So in this case, I, I selected these components. I held control shift and drag. And you can do this as many times as you want once you have certain sections of this built. Also, if you see that this is a common construction that you've done in many of your projects, you can highlight this and add it to a template. Now, when you first get ETAP, don't forget to look at all the folders and templates we provided because there's many things that people build that can be pre-constructed in our templates folder. So you don't need the effort of building them from scratch. So when you get your versions of ETAP, go through in the template folder and take a look at all the pre-built templates we provide. And once you've reviewed them, you have the option to add any template that you've created from your one-line diagram as well. So if I come in here and name this MCC1, for example, I have a list in the auto build editor of the most recent templates that I've provided, allowing me at any time to reconstruct or bring back these templates for the current project or any other project I've worked on. These templates can be shared throughout your organization so they can be used very easily. And everyone you use will be saved in this list for recent use. And all you gotta do is click this arrow and it'll automatically bring this down for repeat use, making building a one line much, much faster than it's ever been before. Also, another menu you may notice is this pull down menu that has a list of voltages. Now I can select this voltage, click a bus, hit this arrow, and it'll propagate this voltage down th downstream throughout the system. So from here on out, any component I open has been propagated with the voltage I selected at that bus. You can also do this upstream up to the nearest transformer. So in this case, we could select the voltage propagate and it'll go to the nearest upstream transformer as well. And if you notice the one on the secondary side, that also went upstream to the secondary side of the above transformer. So the voltage propagation now is customizable and can be easily done for large portions of your system. And don't forget in ETAP 14 that it, our composite networks have now been enabled to have unlimited connections. So in this case, at any point, you can take different components and instead of clicking on a pin, I can go into the composite network and connect to any part that's inside. So with these tools, we've drastically enhanced the speed of which we, we are building a one line diagram. Also, another feature that we've added is I can select portions of the system move them as future state so that they're built in the future. And in the theme editor, I can take my future state components and make them transparent. What this does is this hides any components in the future. So that when I select OK on this theme, any future components will be hidden and this is all base dependent. So in this case, I, I'm canceling it out just to show you that all of this is, is base and revision dependent. So now what you've seen is a quick way to build a one line diagram. And also, don't forget to use your alignment tools as well, which is also shown in the auto build toolbar. Now, in this version, we've made building a one line so quick 
that I built that so quick that this webinar wasn't too long as well. So with that, we are going to stand by for questions on auto build and we'll give questions about five minutes and then we'll give people a five minute break or 10 minute break till 930 when we start our short circuit analyzer as well. So we will stand by for questions, but we appreciate your time and we hope that you saw how fast I built that one line diagram um, will help in future releases of new design projects. Thank you, John, for the presentation on auto build. And as you can see from the presentation, it takes uh, the, the pain of uh, building the one line diagram one click at a time and reduces it into a, a very fast uh, and easy process along with the alignment and voltage propagation tools. I'm sure you'll be saving more time um, building the one line diagram and spending more time actually doing the actual analysis of the electrical system. Speaking of analysis, our next topic is short circuit result analyzer. It's, uh, it, it's, a, it's another analyzer in a series of analyzers we've already developed and released with uh, ETAP. Uh, the first analyzer we had released with ETAP was for load flow, followed by short uh, arc flash, and then finally uh, short circuit result analyzer. The purpose for a result analyzer is to essentially understand the results from multiple studies in one summarized table. So when you're trying to run various scenarios, uh, whether they are for load flow or arc flash or short circuit, we obviously get multiple sets of results from these different cases or different scenarios. And uh, the analyzer allows us to take these multiple cases, uh, put them into a single view, and then compare. Uh, and in many cases, it also allows us to quickly identify deviations or alerts uh, in the system uh, and give us a summarized table that we can essentially copy and paste into our uh, overall study report. So that's essentially the, the main uh, concept of the short circuit result analyzer. Uh, and uh, in order to essentially uh, demonstrate that, I'll cover a few uh, basics first before we actually jump into the analyzer itself. Now, in order to prepare a scenario inside ETAP, uh, we utilize what we call a multi-dimensional database where you can uh, take multiple uh, re data revisions. So these are essentially different engineering properties uh, for the same electrical system. You can combine them with uh, various um, configurations in the electrical network. So if I take an example of this uh, large diagram that I have here, um, this is my normal system. If I consider a different configuration where one of the utilities out of service, we can see that this utility and the transformer connected to it has been de-energized, whereas normally it's actually operating uh, energized. So the configurations allow us to consider what's open, what's closed, which motors are spare uh, or running continuously, things of that nature can be packaged into a configuration. Uh, and then we have uh, study cases or essentially the study or solution parameters where you can define various things like uh, what fault uh, standard do you want to use, uh, what are the various parameters that control the outcome of the results uh, based on different method methodologies that have been given to us in these standards. Uh, and also control uh, some of the basic things like which buses or nodes are being faulted or which ones are being analyzed uh, in the electrical system. So when we combine uh, engineering properties, configurations, and study cases together, we get what we call inside ETAP a unique scenario. So by clicking on the scenario wizard on my system toolbar on the left-hand side, I can launch the scenario wizard. I've gone ahead in the previously and created about 12 of these scenarios for my short circuit study. Uh, and the, what the scenario wizard essentially gives me is uh, a package that contains my revision, my configuration, what kind of study am I running, uh, what sub study or subtype of study do I want to run, uh, which study case do I want to use? And obviously, what is the 
output report that I will be writing my results into. So as we step through different scenarios, we can see that they are slightly different from each other, uh, all 12 of them. And I can essentially select one of these uh, cases at any point in time and press run and uh, let the program update the uh, output report, uh, give me the alert views um, where we report the violations or summarize the violations in the system, uh, as well as see the, the results uh, directly on the single line diagram. So the study is done. Here's my alert view that's showing me my critical problems and marginal problems in the system. Uh, and the critical and marginal problems, again, are defined inside the study case. So anything that is past 100% of the device capability is uh, thrown into the critical section. Uh, any uh, duty violations that are with above 95% of the device capability, they are thrown into the marginal section. So essentially there's two different uh, alert thresholds that you can uh, include and control inside the program. And again, as I zoom into the diagram, we can see uh, different results uh, in the system. By the way, as I zoom out, uh, this again highlights one of the features that John was mentioning previously when it comes to uh, summarizing the uh, layers on the one-line diagram. As I zoom out, we start seeing less and less detail of the one-line diagram uh, because we are essentially using the, the theme manager to control uh, at what zoom level different components are being shown uh, or being uh, hidden in the system. And this is also user configurable. So at this zoom level, my three binding transformer is summarized. I don't see the actual symbol anymore. But as I zoom in, I can see the, the details. Um, so again, the scenario essentially is giving me the results on the one-line diagram. I can obviously look at my alert view and see my violations in the system. This is the traditional approach for doing the analysis. However, we want to summarize uh, results from various uh, scenarios. So these, three, uh, these 12 scenarios that I have, I want to summarize all the results from all of these cases. So before I get to the summary, the next step I want to do is go to the study wizard uh, and set up all the 12 cases that I want the program to run. So you can think of the study wizard as essentially a batch run, one through 12. They're all packaged inside the short circuit study. So when I press run, and I won't do, won't do it right now because uh, it's a very large system and it will take a few minutes to run. I've already run this in the past. Um, the program will essentially step through each scenario and start updating the output reports in each case. So obviously you can see the value of it right away. Uh, if I was to go inside this uh, transformer and change any of the properties of this transformer, I obviously would have to rerun my entire study because it impacts my fault current contribution because it's so close to the source, it will impact every single component in the network. So by changing the property on one of the component, I can just quickly go back to my study wizard, press run, and get all my short circuit reports or load flow or motor starting or transient stability, all of them updated um, in one shot. Uh, and go back to my analysis and spend more time actually trying to uh, find the problems and provide uh, solutions or recommendations to uh, for the electrical system. So I've already run all of these cases. In order for me to bring up the uh, short circuit analyzer, uh, you can actually access it from the short circuit toolbar right here. Uh, I'm currently utilizing an IEC um, short circuit scenario. Therefore, I'm seeing the IEC short circuit toolbar. If you were utilizing uh, the ANSI standard, you will obviously see the ANSI short circuit toolbar. Regardless, the analyzer is for both ANSI and IEC. So when I click on it, uh, the, the program gives me uh, a selection for my standard, first of all. I can choose between ANSI or IEC reports. Now, in this particular system, it's a little bit unique because um, this system actually has a combination of I IEC rated equipment as well as ANSI rated equipment. So we've had no choice. We run uh, ANSI short circuit 
to compare uh, the fault current contribution from the ANSI standard and compare it against the uh, breakers that are ANSI rated breakers. Uh, and then we ran IEC short circuit to compare the IEC short circuit results against devices that are IEC rated. So it's, it's a interesting uh, example file that has both sets of uh, equipment. So when I go to the uh, standard selection, first of all, I'll start with ANSI standard. Uh, the, the next thing I have is a choice. Do you want to look at the three phase device duty or single phase? So I'm just gonna stick to the three phase for now. Uh, and we can see that scenario one, eight and nine are for ANSI and if I switch over to IEC, the remainder are uh, were utilizing uh, IEC standard for running the calculations. So first of all, we would like to see what's different in these studies that I've run. So I can just quickly select general and that gives me an overall uh, picture uh, what's different in these three different scenarios that I created and I ran them. So obviously my configuration is different uh, because the configuration is different. The number of buses or components that were solved uh, in each of these scenarios are slightly different. Um, and we can see that um, uh, the pre-fault voltage that was used is actually identical. It was 102% because we were trying to see what the maximum uh, fault current levels are going to be. Uh, so the study case pretty much remained uh, the same. In this case, the configuration changed. So with that approach, if I go to the device duty uh, option and device duty implies checking the short circuit rating against the capability or the device duty capability of the device. Uh, I have all of these different devices I can choose from, uh, bus, breakers, fuses, and switches. Uh, generator circuit breakers are split separately because there are additional uh, factors uh, or results that are calculated very specifically for generator circuit breakers uh, due to the way the current decrements in, in a generator and the uh, difference in the co uh, contact parting times uh, uh, and the response time of the breaker. So let me go back to bus real quick. Uh, so we have a, a, a list of buses. I've actually faulted all of them in, in this network. We can see some basic information about this bus. I have selected a nominal KV. I can choose additional information like type, and the pre-fault voltage that is used for that bus. The reason the pre-fault voltage would be different uh, for different buses in, is in case if you were using uh, load flow uh, to determine what the pre-fault voltages are, in which case you would not have a fixed 102%. Uh, each bus may have a different pre-fault level based on the, the load flow uh, analysis. Um, and, and actually, we can uh, do that very quickly. Um, I have uh, a case here, which is uh, ANSI operating. And inside this case, I'm using pre-fault voltage, which is uh, instead of fixed, it's actually using the magnitude from, from load flow. Uh, if I was to switch this to normal load flow configuration, uh, run my load flow analysis, uh, once the load flow completes in the system, and it just did on this network, I can go back to my uh, short circuit analysis, select my operating configuration, ask the program to prompt me for uh, a completely different report name. Uh, and I'm gonna call this SC13, click OK. And what the program is doing now is using different pre-fault voltages uh, for each of these different buses. So when we bring up the analyzer again, uh, I'll see SC13 uh, in my list uh, as well. I can choose that as my reference. Uh, and that's what I want to see now. Uh, include the pre-fault voltages. And now you can see that they're no longer 102 for this specific report. They are 99 to 98%. They're more realistic based on the actual uh, power flow uh, in the system. So uh, the information essentially allows you to see what uh, input data was used for uh, each of the components. The reference option allows you to pick and choose which is the main study uh, that's being referenced in this uh, table. So when the, in the input data is being shown, where is that reference coming from? 
Uh, so in this case, I'm bringing reference from SC13. And then we can focus on the actual results themselves for, for our bus. So we have four different reports in the system. Uh, I can clearly see that uh, my critical problems, which are any duty violations above 100%, are color-coded in red. So I can see those. And as I scroll through the, the table, I can also see that there are certain components that are marked in this magenta color. So if any components that are exceeding 95% of the device duty capability. Now, let's say if you wanted to not even worry about the ones that uh, are within the operating capability of the device or the interrupting capability of the device, you can just select this option, skip non-alerted devices, and in which case you can just focus on the components that uh, are exceeding their device duty. So that's a much shorter list, and then we can spend more time actually analyzing this list and see why these components are uh, exceeding the device duty uh, in the system. You can also choose between different sets of results. Currently, I'm comparing all the symmetrical uh, values uh, in kiloamps. I can also switch over to asymmetrical, to the peak values. And you can see how quickly we just bring up the results from various reports uh, and summarize them into this table. So it's a very fast uh, table that can pull multiple uh, scenario results and compare them side by side. Uh, similarly, if I go to the high voltage breaker, uh, we can also see the type of the breaker. So it is a three cycle, five cycle breaker. It's interrupting capability because this is an ANSI standard uh, contact parting time. Uh, and obviously which bus is connected uh, to this uh, circuit breaker. So again, you can turn on a lot of uh, input data here. But the cool thing about the analyzer is this magic button right here called worst case. So if I have four different cases, uh, I want to understand which case and what is the worst case magnitude that I get from that particular case. I just want one value. Give me the worst case condition that I need to uh, compare against the, the, the breaker or uh, bus capability in order to decide whether I need to upgrade this breaker or not. And if, if so, what value should I choose? In order to do that, you can just press the worst case option and then very quickly all the various results are gone and replaced with one set of results and we can see that the worst case for circuit breaker uh, 3731 is 62 kiloamps. So any breaker rating that I want to pick for this breaker should be greater than 62 based on all the different cases that I have run uh, in my system so far. And that worst case condition comes from scenario number eight. So as I scroll through, we can see that it, does, it just so happens that scenario eight gives me the worst case fault current contribution for my ANSI rated uh, devices. So now similarly, I can switch over to IEC. We have uh, a number of uh, additional reports here that are very specifically to IEC. Uh, once again, I can go to my general section here and see that um, I have created uh, all three-phase device duty. They're using different configurations. Uh, and you can see that they're using different methods as well. IEC gives us method A through C uh, for XORR adjustment for the peak kiloamps. So I'm essentially switching between different methods just to see which one actually yields the worst case uh, fault current contribution. And all of them are utilizing the maximum uh, uh, C factor. So you can see the C factors here for uh, different voltage levels, and they're all at 1.1, uh, which is the standard uh, IECC factor for maximum uh, fault current. Uh, so we'll switch over to device duty again. Uh, same procedure applies. Uh, I have a selection of my device types, so I can switch between bus and breakers, fuses and switches. Uh, I'll just stick to my high voltage breaker for now. You can again choose your input data, just like ANSI. Um, for each of those devices. You can pick which result you want to compare. So IK double prime versus peak current uh, versus the, the DC current, uh, the short time uh, withstand current. 
uh, all of those can be easily pulled up from the reports and displayed. Uh, and once again, if you are selecting, um, let's say, the, the peak current and we want to compare against the device peak uh, capability, we are color coding the critical and marginal values and displaying them in, in this table. So once again, I can click on my worst case condition and I can see that for all of these breakers, their size or rating must be greater than uh, 90 kilo amps uh, peak. So it kind of helps me or assists me in evaluating or picking the, the best size uh, for the circuit breaker. But here you can see that uh, these values were mostly generated from scenario number seven, but then there were certain cases where uh, a different scenario resulted in the worst case value. So in a case where the tie breaker was closed, it so turned out that these two breakers had higher duty than if the tie was actually open in, in the system. Um, uh, some minor options here, just, just for the sake of uh, understanding, you can also choose to switch the values between kiloamps and amps. So very quick toggle button here. And if you decide to see the voltage in uh, volts instead of kilovolts, you can also toggle uh, from here uh, directly. Now let's say I wanted to take this data into Excel because I want to do different types of uh, uh, additional analysis through, through Excel or color code things in a different manner. Um, you can just select uh, this entire table, uh, control C or copy uh, this table. I'll bring up an empty Excel workbook here and I can just simply paste uh, that information into the system. And then uh, through Excel, uh, you have a choice. You can also do uh, things like uh, conditional formatting where you can select things that are uh, greater than um, a certain value, let's say anything greater than 100, mark it differently. And this will give you exactly the same type of uh, table that we see inside ETAP. So 180 was color coded, and that's essentially what we see right here. Uh, so you can also change your formatting criteria uh, by taking it into Excel or doing additional manipulation uh, of, of the data. So in summary, the uh, short circuit result analyzer uh, utilizes um, multiple reports and compares those multiple reports uh, into a single view. Uh, you can uh, obviously uh, expand on the um, usage of the analyzer by combining it with the scenario or the study wizards. So you can package each scenario into a uh, inside the scenario wizard, you can then take multiple scenarios and package them inside a study wizard and automate the process of running the study. So you can spend more time uh, actually doing the comparison or the analysis of the study. And once again, the short circuit result analyzer is very similar to the load flow and arc flash analyzer where we are essentially taking uh, voltage drops and losses for load flow and comparing them across multiple studies. For arc flash, we are comparing the incident energy and the fault, uh, the uh, arc flash energy levels and reporting the worst case for you. Uh, and uh, some of those are also available as videos on our uh, tutorial uh, or resource section on our website. So you're more than welcome to go to etap.com to resources and view how the other analyzers work in the system. And once again, this uh, short circuit analyzer will be released as part of ETAP 14. It's a very nice capability added to the short circuit module, and it is available uh, as part of the short circuit uh, module itself. So uh, just like auto build, if you have uh, your maintenance up to date, you will be receiving the upgrade for ETAP 14 automatically. Uh, and along with that, you will receive auto build and the short circuit analyzer if you have purchased base and short circuit as part of your package. Uh, if you want the short circuit analyzer and you don't have short circuit, again, you may contact us at, you know, at sales at etab.com. I will be more than happy to add that to your configuration. So with that, uh, we're done with the second half of this webinar. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, uh, we'll 
take them for the next five to 10 minutes in the questions panel, uh, or you can also email the questions to us at uh, sales at etab.com. Thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, please uh, stay tuned for the uh, additional webinars uh, coming up uh, in a few weeks from now. Thank you.